welcome to the Savage NASCAR Podcast, episode number five. And today, I'm here with Dank NASCAR Memes. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, bro. Thank you for having me. How you doing? Doing great, man. Thanks for asking. I hope you are doing great as well. And my first question, which is usually the question I ask all my guests here on the show, is how do you find your interest or fascination in the sport of NASCAR? So... Uh... I liked the movie Cars when I was little. I always had a fascination with, uh, like, race cars and stuff and speed and all that. Uh, so my dad knew what NASCAR was, and I went to a race in 2008. And ever since then, I mean, I started watching it on TV for, like, the rest of the 2008 season. Uh, I watched it in 2009, 2010. Uh, but, I mean, I've always had fascination fascination with cars and stuff so nascar has been a cool thing to watch guessing by your profile picture i'm guessing that your favorite driver is kyle bush is that true i know you're not a big fan of him but my favorite nascar driver uh, as of right now is denny hamlin uh reason i like him is uh when i was younger it was 2008 i mean i was a huge fan of the cars movie with like lightning mcqueen and stuff and my dad knew what NASCAR was, so uh, they decided to take me to a race. Uh, I went to Pocono Raceway. I'm not sure if it was the first or second race. It was in 2008. I believe Carl Edwards won that race. But uh, pre-race, when in the fan zone and stuff, I uh, actually got to meet Denny Hamlin at his uh, merchandise hauler. Uh, he was showing up there. And ever since I met him there, I've been a fan of him, really. I've actually uh, met Denny Hamlin twice. Uh, I met him back in that race in 2008, and also when I went to uh, took a road trip all the way down to Charlotte, North Carolina, in like around uh, Christmas break in 2018. It was uh, I actually got to meet Denny Hamlin at the JGR shop when I went to visit there. Like all the drivers were like on break and something. I asked the receptionist there. Like, is anybody going to be here today? Any chance I get to meet anybody? She's like, oh, no, they're, like, all on vacation and stuff. I'm like, we were actually two hours late showing up there because uh, we had a problem with the Airbnb we were staying at outside of Charlotte. But because we were late, as we were leaving, uh, as we were, like, going out the door, Denny Hamlin comes to drop off a package at, at the desk. So it was really cool to meet him. I got to talk with him. How ironic, Denny Hamlin dropping off a package. Was it a FedEx box? Uh, I do not believe it was a FedEx box that Denny Hamlin dropped off. Uh, I was too busy, just like, in awe, really. I was like, yo, oh, no way. <laughs> so uh, I wasn't really paying attention to the package he was delivering. Pretty nice guy. He's uh, nice to talk to. He's pretty chill. I don't know, just talked about like racing stuff. This was uh, right before the 2019 Daytona 500. Uh, it was a month before. So uh, I actually uh, wished him luck in the Daytona race, and then he won it. So, I don't know, I guess he could say I'm like a good luck charm or something, maybe. But Denny's a really nice guy. I mean, like, we got to talk, like, one-on-one for, like, five, ten minutes uh, about, like, racing and stuff. Uh, So that was uh, really cool, something, like, I'll never forget. Awesome story on how you were able to meet Denny Hamlin. And I haven't been able to meet him before. I've met a handful of other drivers, but... Never got to meet him when I haven't really seen him up close in person, but I've seen him. Uh, one race I went to, I did see him win, was the 2019 Daytona 500. Now, that's your account. Why did you choose to base your account, like, with memes? Or basically, why did you choose memes to be the forefront of your account? I think memes are a great thing for society, and, and memes make people's days better, and... I was wondering, why did you choose memes, uh, why did you choose to make your account sort of a meme account? Even though it is a NASCAR account, why did you choose to make it more about memes than about uh, NASCAR news, per se? Uh, I started my account back in, like, January 2019, uh, like, about a month before Daytona. So, I mean, I wanted to, like, uh, you know, have fun with a little comedy and stuff. Uh, try to bring some uh, comedic relief to the NASCAR community on Instagram, you know? And uh, it was just something I like to do. So it, it grew into, like, a, I don't know, personal thing that I like to do, really. I mean, I still enjoy doing it today. I've, like, kind of spread my content and stuff. I do league racing now. 
Uh, I mean, this is my first time being on a podcast, so the account just continues to grow. And I mean, I do not have a YouTube channel right now. I don't, I don't really do any of my own uh, podcasts right now, but I could be starting a podcast sometime soon. I've been thinking about it, so uh, stay tuned for that. And you mentioned league racing. What type of league racing do you do? NASCAR Heat 5 or NR2003? Or what type of league racing do you do? And, like, what consoles? Yeah, so at the beginning of quarantine and uh, lockdown, I started league racing on uh, NASCAR Heat 4. This was before Heat 5 came out. I joined one league. Uh, it was a small league, like 10 race season. Uh, I missed the playoffs by one point in that league, so uh, that kind of sucked. But uh, I joined another league, uh, Piston Cup Series. Uh, that was fun. Uh, made the playoffs in that, made it to the championship four. Uh, I did a lot of league racing in the summer. Uh, I have my own league right now, the Femboy Hooters Cup Series. It's pretty much a m- meme-based league, if you want to call it. But uh, I don't league race as much right now because of school and stuff, but I still do it. Denny Hamlin has had a really good season, same thing as Kevin Harvick, and I picked Denny Hamlin to win the championship this season. Do you think that Denny Hamlin will win the championship this year, or who's your pick for it? As much as I like Hamlin, and I want to see him win a championship finally, uh, I got to go with Kevin Harvick. I mean, he's having one of the best seasons we've seen in a very long time. Uh Nine wins, that's the most anybody has had since Jimmy Johnson, I believe, in 2007. And he's been consistent, too. He's had a ton of top tens as well. I mean, Denny Hamlin, he's had he's had seven wins, but there are a bunch of tracks where he just uh, hasn't performed or just hasn't had those consistent top tens that Harvick has had. I mean, like, you could see Hamlin finish top ten like a bunch of races, but then, like, once in a while, he just has that 20th place finish or so. And then he has those races, such as like Charlotte or something, where uh, he loses his ballast or where he wrecked at, or he wrecks at Daytona or Talladega. So I just don't see the consistency with Hamlin. So I'm going to pick Harvick. There is a big story, sort of, in the NASCAR community um, this week. Or I don't know if it was a huge story. If y'all don't know, uh, Bush Licker was possibly and considered the goat of NASCAR memes, and his account got taken down on Wednesday, and. It was very sad. Uh, I mean, he had so much great memes, and that account had a lot of followers and everything. It's unfortunate to see what happened. I don't know why it was removed or taken down. Um, there are some rumors that maybe it was Kyle Bush or Samantha Bush or impersonation of an NASCAR driver, which he definitely did not do, and I think was uh, very wrong that his account got taken down and. A lot of people rallied uh, in the NASCAR community and said that this was wrong. And I just want to get your opinion on what happened yesterday. I mean, look, what happened to Bush Lincoln was it's wrong. And I mean, Instagram is, you know, just being stupid again. They've been stupid with a lot of stuff, especially like meme accounts. I feel like they've had a bunch of controversy in the NASCAR meme accounts, too. I mean, I've got my account, uh, taken down temporarily one time i believe it was last year uh because somebody thought my meme was offensive but even even though it wasn't it was like completely like unoffensive or or like harmful i think like some probably some salty elliot fan or someone reported it because it was a meme about chase choking in the playoffs but uh bush lickers memes i mean they were funny that was easily my favorite meme account on instagram Uh, i mean I'll admit his memes were his memes were so much better than mine. I mean, I loved his account. I think he was probably the go to the NASCAR meme world. I mean, not one of the first, but definitely one of the best. And uh, it's a shame that we gotta lose somebody like that. Cause I mean, he posted great content. It was great stuff to see. I mean, I haven't had a lot of conversations with him personally. I never got to like really know him personally. I mean, seemed seemed pretty much like a private guy to me kind of or a lot of like nascar meme accounts like don't have anything wrong with them and i think it's just it just shows that like instagram needs to do a better job of um monitoring their content like there's sometimes i just scroll around and stuff like that and i end up coming across like a really offensive like video whatever and instagram won't age restrict it or take it down but they'll take down one to like 
least amount of like offensive like thing out there. Like I've had some of stuff taken down as well. So I think it's definitely uh, very unfortunate. He is someone that a lot of people looked up to when it came to making NASCAR content and Thankfully, we were able to get in conversation with him a little bit uh, on Wednesday. Uh, he had a second account, so he was able to com communicate with some of us about what happened. And he put on his story a little bit of an explanation about what happened to the Bush Licker account. And, yeah, a lot of us were sad. A lot of people in the NASCAR community were upset about it. And there's people making tribute videos. There's even a, um, a funeral chat, which I was a part of with you uh, in memorial of that account. And that just shows how much his account meant to a lot of people. And what is your predictions for this upcoming race on Sunday, the first race of the third round of the playoffs, the round of eight? <laughs> Not trying to be biased for like my favorite driver here, but I think Denny Hamlin can honestly sweep the Kansas races. He was really good earlier there this season when he won uh he was able to pass cars pretty easily uh and he's one of those people that you know like to run top line run the top line the high line at each track like ride it right near the wall in kansas uh that really works i mean we saw it work in the spring race how well it worked for uh tyler reddick and denny hamlin especially uh speaking of tyler reddick i do expect him to get a top 10 maybe even a top five and Quite possibly, he could win there. I mean, Tyler Ruddick is an insanely, insanely talented driver. So, I mean, I think he'll do good. You'll see other drivers who uh, probably uh, run dirt races and like to run the high line, like Christopher Bell. Uh, he'll be a dark horse there, but I expect Hamlin to win. I do agree with some of that now. I don't think Kansas is, like, really, really good, but I think it's definitely had some entertaining races over the years, and... Now, looking forward to the 2021 season, there's still some names and still some driver options that are still available. There's still rumors of drivers going to different cars that haven't been decided yet. We've seen the last couple of weeks, we've seen some drivers go to different cars, like we saw with Alex Bowman go to the 48 car. Um, and there's rumors that Chase Briscoe might be driving the number 14 next season, which I would really love to see. What is some of your predictions on that? Do you think that Briscoe will go to the 14? Where do you think Kyle Larson would go? What's some of your uh, takes on the upcoming 2021 season, or sort of the silly season, I should say? So I made like a whole list of predictions about the 2021 uh silly season and like free agent signings back in i think it was late july early august uh so for i expected briscoe to go to the uh 14 perhaps next year uh i thought cause I, I thought clint was going to retire at the end of 2021 but now that he is briscoe is definitely going to the 14 like it's not even a question one thing i can tell you for sure fox sports broadcasts in 2021 are going to be lit bro <laughs> It's going to be insanely funny. I mean, you saw how good he was, like, in the booth with Jeff Gordon on, yeah. I, on the iRacing thing. So, I can't wait to see some quality content out of Clint. He's a really funny guy. Uh, great personality. One of my favorite NASCAR personalities uh, all time, really. I mean, so I can't wait to see what he will do in the booth. I don't know if I mentioned it in some of my other podcast episodes, but I don't think that Kyle Larson will get a ride next year just because NASCAR hasn't reinstated him yet. But if he does come back, I see him going to, like, Stuart Haas Racing, for example, or someone like that. I don't see him going to Chevy because Chevy already, like, cut their ties with him. Uh, and I hope to see him back in NASCAR, but I just don't see it happening next season. Do you think that Kyle Larson will get a ride in NASCAR, sort of like a second chance? When I saw that uh, DiBenedetto was going to stay with the Wood Brothers, I thought Larson was going to go to the 48, but they announced that Bone was going to go there. But it's still a possibility that Hendrick is going to go for a three-car team in 2021 instead of a four-car team, which, I mean, I wouldn't like to see because, I mean, yeah, Kyle Larson, I agree. we've seen how apologetic he is. He's a great driver, and if you read the essay that's on his website, he seems pretty apologetic about it about the whole incident with him saying uh, the n-word on the broadcast so i do want to see him back i did like him as a driver i even got to see him win at dover in 2019 so i want to see him back in the sport he's incredibly talented and uh i can't wait for him to get back and i wish he gets that 
top ride, probably with Hendrick Motorsports. Now as we are sort of wrapping up episode number five, I do have one last topic I want to bring up, and it's one I sort of brought up two episodes ago, and that's the 2021 schedule. And I already gave my opinion on that, and I thought it was a great schedule, and I saw a lot of improvements. And I just want to get your opinion on it because I didn't see you post about it or say much about it. So what is your thoughts on the 2021 schedule? It's going to be interesting to see all the new tracks on there. And if they're going to keep the uh, no practice, no qualifying rule, it's going to be in, it's going to be insane, really. I mean, it's tough to run road courses with stock cars because they're so heavy and so tough to maneuver around the tight corners. But uh, I am very excited to see Road America, yeah. Coda on there. Uh, All-Star Race in Texas, I'm not so happy about since Texas is, you know, <laughs> Texas is Texas. I agree. Uh, I was planning to go on five ra- to go to five races in 2021, which was g- going to be promising, but unfortunately it couldn't happen. Uh, I live in New York City, so four closest racetracks to me that like are in driving distance are... Pocono, Dover, Watkins Glen, and New Hampshire. So, if I went to all four of those, I got tickets. I've, even if I got good tickets and pit passes for all of those, and even if I take in the gas mileage payment, uh, it would still cost less than to go to Daytona. So, I'd obviously go to four races rather than just one. It's a promising and exciting uh, schedule for 2021. I like the races, uh, just that the dates uh, didn't work out in my favor exactly. And that's going to wrap up the podcast today. I'd like to thank you for joining us. And do you have any closing remarks or anything you would like to say? Yeah, thank you all so much for having me. I mean, this was a fun experience doing my first podcast. Woo, NASCAR. (laughs) There you go. All right, see you, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can check out his link to his Instagram down below. Thank you all for watching. And that's a wrap. We've reached a checkered flag. And see you on the next one. Peace.